Hi, this is another video on the uh, Tagano microscope. Oh, I better turn my studio lights on so I've got the same light source. This is another Tagano microscope video because uh, they asked me to do a video testing the USB 3 output rather than the HDMI output to see if the problem still happens. So here it is. I'm now got what I'm capturing is the screen from my PC, the USB 3 output come in from the Tagano microscope and we're going to, you can see the reflection there that's going to cause the problem let's zoom in and see if we get the same problem with USB 3 if we do, if we do see it, that means, I'm sure this is why they're asking me it means that the head unit itself, like the actual Sony, I think they use a Sony camera in here it means like the camera itself, the video output from that or the output from the processing of that is then causing, it's, it's the problems happening there, like it's an exposure control thing, I don't know, right? So it could be something like that, and that's causing the problem before it even gets to the HDMI output, but I don't think so. Yeah, so my, my bet is it won't happen, right? So if it does happen, that means it's here, but no, my, my bet is still on the HDMI. Place your bets now, I'm doing this with my live audience, place your bets right now, is it going to do it or not? Will it do it? What are, what are the live audience saying? Someone says they still want to buy one. <laughs> They're very expensive, the Tagano microscopes, but they are very good. No, won't happen. Someone says it'll happen on both. Jody says it's a HDMI issue only. It will, Van says it will do it. Okurka says yes, live, so it won't do it. <laughs> maybe, no, you can't maybe, yes or no. It will remain an issue. Okay, I'm, I'm betting it doesn't, right? Won't happen, not in USB. Mike from Mike's Electric Stuff says HDMI only. There you go. So Mike's Mike's calling it, same as me, HDMI only. Not on USB. Oh no, it's probably 50-50. Look, Jim, Nick, they're all saying yes. It will turn the image negative. <laughs> It'll work. Okay, right. All right. Mike from Mike's Electric Stuff and others reckon it's HDMI only, but there's some people think it'll still do it. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's go in. Let's go in. Let's go in. Oh, focus, you bastard. Hello. There we go. Okay, that's where it happened before. I'm going to tilt it. It's not doing it. It's not doing it. There you go. It ain't doing it. It's a HDMI thing. So there you go. It, it doesn't do it. And by the way, I was able to get it. It wasn't just a chip. I was able to get it just the solder mask too. But it didn't happen as much. The... The chip was really good. What if I? No, I'm I'm absolute maximum magnification there. So it doesn't it doesn't happen. So seems like it's a HDMI thing. Let me see if I can recreate the HDMI thing. So I will pull out the USB. There we go. There we go. Okay, let's do it again. Let's do it again. There you go. So this is the HDMI output now. Turn off my oscilloscope. View at the top. Yeah, there, there we go. Straight into it. Straight into it. Straight into it. And look, see? I can get it to happen on just the just the solder mask. So it, it isn't anything to do with the chip. It's it's the overexpo in fact, wow, that's really doing it. Right? Yeah. So it's really it's the overexposure. But if I zoom out, right, it doesn't do it like that, right? It doesn't do it. So it needs to be like either overexposure on most of the image. Or something like that, right? So it needs to have a certain amount of the image. So if I lift that up, well, no, I can't because it loses focus now. But no, no, it's not. It's not doing anything. Anyway, there you go. That's interesting. So there you go. Test concluded. Um, it's not happening to USB three. This is interesting. It's happening with when it's just sitting there. Look, look. See, it's doing it. It's doing it. When I'm just, it's just sitting there, just sitting there like that. You, you saw it, USB 3, um, so that answers that question. It's still something to do with the HDMI. I do want to get more separate monitors and see if I can reproduce it on an external monitor again. All right, now what I'm going to try, I just tried it on my live show here. I've got a um, EpiFan, yes, EpiFan AVIO 4K uh, video HDMI capture thing it's a like top end made in canada hi to all my canadian viewers um you know top end hdmi capture 
thing. And so I'm feeding the output from the Tegado microscope into this. Um, and I'm capturing it on my, I'm doing a screen capture here. Um, and it works fine. It, it works fine. It does not have the problem. It does not have the problem. So it seems to be a combination of Tegano microscope and the Blackmagic ATEM. So my next step will be to find a monitor, an external monitor, which I have found before. I have to go back and find the monitor, like an external monitor. So plug HDMI directly into an external monitor and see if it still does it, which I have done before, but I can't remember which monitor I use. I have to look at my videos. So the Blackmagic is not as tolerant as this. And it's not as tolerant as, um, well, no, we did the USB. That's got nothing to do with HDMI um, capture tolerance. So the Blackmagic is not as tolerant as this Epithan um, 4K capture device. So assuming that there's an, like a sort of, you know, something funny with the HDMI output of the Tegado microscope. It's just not, um, this thing just captures it fine. So that doesn't solve my problem, by the way, because I need it to go into my Blackmagic ATEM to record videos to switch things. So that doesn't help solve my problem. Um, and for those who asked about a splitter, I do actually have a splitter here. Um, it's a real cheap, one of those $10 HDMI in powered from 5 volt USB to HDMI outs. And the, out, the HDMI output of this just didn't even get through at all. So I, I don't know what's going on there. It didn't even get through. <laughs> Whereas my PC screen gets through fine. That's what I use my splitter for, for the uh, capture um, screen that you're seeing at the moment. What this, the image you're seeing right here, down below, that's actually coming through a HDMI splitter. That's coming from my PC. And I tried that same splitter and the Tegano video just doesn't even go through it. I just get a blank screen. So I don't know what's going on there. So yeah, um, <laughs> strange. Still doing the live show. And I'm, um, I just tried another thing. Look at what's happening. This is the HDMI output of the Tegano microscope, but I've plugged it into channel three of my Blackmagic ATEM switcher before I had it on channel two. So I've got it on channel three. Those in the live audience can see that I've got channel three enabled now instead of channel two, um, which is not there. And look, look, it's not happening. It's not happening. It's a miracle. It's not happening. Are you kidding me? I know, sorry to those who mentioned this in previous videos that said, oh, try a different um, HDMI input. Sorry, I should have tried it that sooner. You are right. That seems to fix the problem. No way. Wow, okay. Right, I'm gonna live switch it now. I'm gonna live switch. I've got a live audience at home. This is filmed in front of a live studio audience. I'm gonna switch the HDMI back to channel two. Back to channel two. Switch my Tagano input. Gotta focus your bastard. Boom, boom. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm still not gonna, ah, uh, okay. Right, there's definitely something on the black magic side. There's definitely something on the black magic side. When you've got a video signal that's not processed the same on channel two and channel three, you've, you've, you've got a problem. This is going back to black magic. Aha. Uh -huh. That doesn't mean that there's not something wrong with the tech, because I've, you, you have to remember, I have seen this on an external monitor, and I will endeavor to try and find that same external monitor. Somebody in live chat, Okurka, said that um, it was the BenQ monitor, so I have to get that back out of the dungeon and try it. So, um, so yeah, if I can find a monitor, again, that still causes a problem, it still means there's a problem with the HDMI output of the Tagano, but it's being processed differently by different inputs. Of the, of the Blackmagic ATEM. I'm using the Blackmagic ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. Now, let's try other inputs. Let's try channel one. Choose channel one. Uh, sorry, my, this is my, my, my face is now gone. Right, yep, channel one does it. Channel one does it, and it does in the preview image as well. So it's not just like an internal processing thing for full screen. So channel one does it. Channel two does it. They're obviously using the same chip. And I can't remember the teardown. Um, but I think, yeah, I think there was one chip between two. So I'm sure, if you go watch my teardown video, okay? So now I'm using input four. It's now the PC screen up the top there. Ta-da! Doesn't do it. Doesn't do it. It's only on channel one and two. Only on channel one and two. There you go. There you go. All right. Um, the only thing left to do 
on my end, I think, is to find an external monitor that it does it on, and then that shows that there's potentially a HDMI, uh, you know, sort of like compliance issue with the Tagano, and if that's the case, then maybe, yeah, I can understand that the ATEM doesn't handle it that well on one channel, because I think they're using different chips. They're using different chips for one and two and three and four. I have to confirm that. I'll watch my own video back of my teardown um, and my teardown photos over my Flickr account, I'm sure. If it happens on an external monitor, it means that there is some compliance issue with the Tagano, but, the, but there's probably no excuse. Black Magic, it should be able to handle it, right? If it handles it on three and four and doesn't handle it on one and two, there's definitely a Black Magic problem as well. As well. So there you go. Boop. Pump the ball back to Black Magic as well. All right, now I'm analyzing this um, after the fact, and I got some of my original uh, footage here that I did from the uh, live show, and this is where I was showing it on this uh, BenQ monitor here, direct HDMI output straight into the monitor, and here's where I thought it was doing on the monitor, but I don't think it was. Look, check this out. Look at my, sorry, it's behind my head, my Tagano microscopes behind my head, but watch my hands. Watch my hands, ready? It's about to happen. Watch this. Why that has anything to do... Come in. With Come me. in. Like... Boom! Whoa. Oh. No. Did that... Watch it oh, again. No, hang see? On. No. You no, see that? On. My Do hand the... went the... under the microscope. Like the... Oh. And I thought no. that was doing it Did on that... the monitor. Oh, hey, no, hang on. No. My hand no, went under on. again. It's doing it. See? Was, so, was I don't think... I don't think there was ever an issue with... The HDMI monitor, although I thought there originally was. I still, maybe I didn't capture it, but I thought there was. But I've tried another couple of monitors, including this BenQ again, but granted I've got the new board. Okay, so there may be some subtle differences between the old board and the new board. But we definitely had, you remember that color problem? That color problem of the old board in the Tagano was definitely a problem. We got the tearing of the lines and everything and the color was all off and it was horrible. And so I haven't been able to reproduce that. So I think whatever was causing that problem, that's fixed now. But yeah, I did, like I cannot, I've tried several different monitors, different brands, um, and I cannot reproduce directly on a monitor. So it looks like it's the ATEM. It looks like we're going back to the ATEM. Now, let's actually have a look at inside teardown, I'll link this video in, 1396, um, I did a 4K teardown, and here is the HDMI inputs, here's HDMI input one, you can see down there, number one, number two, number three, we know it only happens on number channels one and two, and doesn't happen on channel three, look at this, the chipset is different, it's got an analog devices ADV 7610 on all of the other inputs, so two, three, four, five, uh, right? It's only one, inputs one and two are the only ones that are special. And they use a TI chipset, the TMDS-171. Uh, so have we got an issue with the Texas Instruments HDMI capture chipset? Now, of course, I still don't rule out some sort of marginal signal thing on the Tagano, but it's looking like it's a definite ATEM, well, at, at least there is a difference. We can prove there's a difference between, we've proven there's a difference between the uh, channels one and two input and three and four. This fault only happens on one and two channels input, which is why I originally ruled out the ATEM because I switched it to channel one and it did the same fault. And uh, so I assumed all the other inputs were the same. Uh, should have watched my own teardown. Um, and yeah, physically different chipset. Channels three and four, they're the only ones I tried. I haven't tried six, uh, five, six, seven, and eight, but you know, I'm uh, pretty much, okay, I assume before, but you know, anyway, they use the same chipset, right? So this is a physically different chipset. I believe it's designed for 4K input for channels um, one and two and only 1080p input. Uh, for this. So it could be the chipset, but it could also be the firmware or something else or the setup of the ATEM that's causing, that's setting up these chips because these chips have to be set up. They've got a zillion internal registers to set them up and do various things. Um, or it could be the processing of the output, but I, like, yeah, I don't think so. Given that it's like just different branded chipsets doing different things, I think it might I don't know, is the smart money now on a TI chipset causing the problem? Or is it the um, ATEM? By the way, uh, 
the other one I've got, the Mini, the Mini does exactly the same. So this is the four channel uh, version. It's got the uh, 171 chip over here and the analog devices over here for the other three channels. It's only got the one uh, 4K input. So yeah, that's the, that's the teardown photo of that. So yeah, so I expect it to happen on the Mini as well, just not, not just the Mini Extreme. But bingo, that's interesting, huh? So let's look at this uh, TI chipset. It's a HDMI input port to output port with CDR up to 3.4 gigabits per second, compatible with uh, HDMI 1.4. Electrical parameters supports 4K, uh, 2K at 30 frames per second, 12-bit color depth, 1080p, high refresh rates, etc., etc. Right? So it's a pretty spicy chip. Digital DVR high definition media interface retimer. Okay, so it's a it's a retimer sampling chip so it's got to go into a hdmi receiver over here so i assume that they're doing that inside the fpga but they're using this as some sort of like retimer or something i i, I don't know uh, if black magic could uh tell us there we go functional block diagram so data registers swap pll pll control so there's signal detection um Right, it's a I squared C control to set up all the registers and everything. As I said, there's probably like, there's probably hundreds of registers to set up something like this. Um, active DDC block. It's got adaptive EQ gain and all sorts of right, all sorts of funky stuff happening. So anyway, that's what we got. Yeah, there's all the registers and uh, and whatnot. Source side application. So yeah, here you can see the analog devices parts and all the others except for the TI on one and two. And then the analog devices part here, it's just a HDMI receiver. So it does a lot less, I guess, than just the um, what they've got on those channel one and channel two. They're special snowflakes. High definition multimeter interface or mandatory and additional 3D video format supported. Extended color metry, Ooh, it's all fancy, it supports all the color gamuts and things. Um, so uh, once again, maybe that's a maybe that's why they're asking about the color gamuts and stuff. Um, so yeah, HDMI receiver, blah blah blah. Anyway, we know it works fine on on this chip, no worries whatsoever. But it comes gutsa on this TI chip. Now whether or not it's a a chip problem that's like a it's inherent in the ti chip i'd have to find another product that actually had this ti chip another hdmi monitor another hdmi capture or processory thing um to try it with so yeah it doesn't happen on my external avio i'll have to i do have a hdmi capture card on this pc but i gotta drag everything over and it's hard um so yeah that's interesting huh it looks like um so i'm going to toss this one back to black magic and uh We'll see if Grant Petty himself will be <laughs> busily working on this and um, why we can't get it. Yeah, you'd need like a, a, a you'd have to start like probing the HDMI stuff and um, and that's not trivial <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Imagination, But interesting, huh? We've now, so, um, yeah, so we'll be like, sorry, Tagano. Um, <laughs> thanks for swapping my board. Um, it may not be your fault. But anyway, there's, as we'll discuss in a live show, um, it, it could be like they could have a marginal output or something like that, which is causing like, and this thing could have marginal specs. We could have marginals like the uh, the uh, design windows not overlapping enough or something weird like that. We know it's not the cable, um, so everyone stop saying the cable. Um, and yeah, it's just anyway. We knew we had a color um, issue before with the old uh, Tagano board, but that now seems to be um, fixed. But this issue actually remains so it points more towards now this um ti chipset and or how atem black magic are uh, you know using this chip and reading the data and uh yeah and actually displaying it so leave your thoughts comments down below catch you next time